the kindness of the Lord with every breath we take. The gift of life and grace, the power of the Lord is the meekness of the Lord who bore humanity with brave humility. Let your mercy flow through us. Your mercy, your mercy. Let your mercy flow through us. Your mercy, your mercy. The beauty of the Lord is the suffering of the Lord. Is Christ upon? Good morning, everybody. Welcome to morning prayer on this uh, Wednesday morning. Um, yeah, the weather has changed. It's not as good as it should have been, um, but there we go. That's life. But we thank God for the rain, even as perhaps we slightly regret is coming. And that sets the tone for the theme of our morning prayer this morning. It's going to be somewhat different. We're going to beginning, be beginning with morning prayer is set in daily prayer on the Church of England website but we're going to have oh, two readings a psalm and a gospel reading and they are going to precede two different sets of prayers we are then going to conclude with an act of communion and I'll explain a bit more about that when we get towards the end of our service but please please be prepared to pray and to post your prayers and your comments in the comments box so we begin. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. A song, a prayer of thanksgiving. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised out of the mouths of babes and at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you, may, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained, what are mortals that you should be mindful of them? Mere human beings that you should seek them out. 
You have made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands and put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. We say together, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. We're now looking at our empty church of St. Thomas. We would see a similar view if you were standing in St. Lawrence. We come now to hear a psalm of lament. And once the psalm has been read, I offer you, or ask you rather, to offer your prayers of lament, your hurts, your sadnesses, your regrets, the things that you are missing about the life of our church now that we can no longer meet within her walls. Julia is going to read Psalm 137 for us, part of it. Beside the rivers of Babylon, we sat and wept as we thought of Jerusalem. We put away our lyres, hanging them on the branches of the willow trees. For there, our captors demanded a song of us. Our tormentors requested a joyful hymn. Sing us one of those songs of Jerusalem. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill upon the harp. May my tongue stick to the roof of my mouth if I fail to remember you, if I don't make Jerusalem my highest joy. Paradoxically, this is a psalm written about not being able to write a psalm. It's a song sung about not being able to sing songs. It is the paradox of lament that we lean into God even while we cry out to God, what are you doing? And so now I encourage you for yourselves, for those whom you love, for our community, for our church community, for the life of our church, to offer to God prayers of lament, sadnesses that are on your heart, people who are on your heart for whom you are sad. Let us pray, but let us express to God our sorrow at these dark times. Father, we grieve the not being able to meet, not to be able to touch, not to be able to see each other face to face. We grieve not being able to use our buildings for the purposes for which they were built. We grieve that we cannot invite in our community to be part of the life of our church in this physical place. We grieve. much of what we've had together we haven't really appreciated till now. We mourn that the pandemic crisis has robbed our children of their education, our school leavers of the celebration of their moving on. We grieve for those who have been unable to meet with friends and to laugh and to rejoice. that loneliness, which was identified as an issue before the pandemic, has become even more so. Father, we lament that as nations we have turned away from you and trusted in our own righteousness. We have stopped following your rules and your laws, and as a result created conditions where such pandemics can spread. We grieve the failure of leadership in different countries of our world, we grieve that personal pride is getting in the way of public service. We 
deeply grieve with those who have lost loved ones, sharing that double grief of the difficulties of a separated ending. We grieve those who cannot visit their loved ones in care homes or in hospital or in hospices. We grieve those who have not spoken with loved ones for, for, ye for what seems like years, even though it's only months. And now we come to our second reading, our Gospel reading. This is from Luke's Gospel, chapter 10, beginning to read at verse 17. When the 72 disciples returned, they joyfully reported to Jesus, Lord, even the demons obey us when we use your name. Yes, Jesus told them. I saw Satan falling from heaven as a flash of lightning. And I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy, and you can walk among snakes and scorpions and crush them. Nothing will injure you. But don't rejoice just because evil spirits obey you. Rejoice because your names are registered as citizens of heaven. Then Jesus was filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit and said, O oh, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, thank you for hiding the truth from those who think themselves so wise and clever and for revealing it to the childlike. Yes, Father, it pleased you to do it this way. My Father has given me authority over everything and no one really knows the Father, the Son except the Father and no one really knows the Father except the Son and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Here is our empty church again, but I want to look at it, I want us to look at it somewhat differently. Think of this as the room two minutes after Pentecost. There's no one here because they've been filled with the Spirit. There's no one here because their despair and fear has been turned into rejoicing and bold proclamation. If you listen carefully, you can hear beyond its walls of this room voices raised in glad celebration, speaking the praises of God in all sorts of languages. And if you wait a few minutes, you will hear the voice of Peter proclaiming that this is that which the prophet Joel prophesied. You will hear the man who denied Jesus and ran away boldly proclaim him to the same enemies that crucified his Lord. You will hear the church being born. You will hear the mission going forward. So while we celebrate our empty church, it isn't just a place of isolation to which we retreat when the going gets tough. It is a bridgehead into the community. And so now we lift our prayers, our thanksgivings, our boldness to God, praying for the ministry of the church, praying for our time, praying for people we long to come to love the Lord. And we pray with gusto and with vigor and with excitement and with joy. So let's lift to God our ministry as a church. Let's lift to God the people we will see or speak to or meet today. Let's pray, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Father, we thank you for technology, for the ability to join together in praise and in prayer. We give you thanks, living God, that we can speak to people about Jesus, even though we cannot be in the same room as them.
Thank you for the people we meet on our daily walks. Help us to bless them in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the conversations with friends that lie ahead. We pray you'll transform them so that you become the centre. Thank you that there is nothing too big for your power and nothing too small for your love. Thank you for the creativity of your church. Thank you that as we go forward, you will show us new ways, fresh ways of reaching out to others. That lockdown does not lock you out. That pandemic cannot stop the movement of the spirit. I pray for my brother Stuart. I claim him for God's kingdom because he will be a warrior indeed for Christ. We pray for our MP, for Justin, Justin Matters. We pray for a new surname for him. We pray for the surname Martyr, not as we understand it, but in its original sense of witness. We claim him for Christ and pray that his commitment, his dedication, his love for this community might be transformed by the love of the Spirit and the love of God. And I encourage you to go on praying prayers of lament and prayers of celebration and anticipation. We're going to sum up our prayers now by saying together the collect, which you'll find at the bottom of the service sheet. And then before we say the Lord's Prayer, we're going to have a brief act of communion. So we say together, O Lord, from whom all good things come, grant to us, your humble servants, that by your holy inspiration, we may think those things that are good and by your merciful guiding may perform the same. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So good morning in the flesh, as it were. This will be the first act of Holy Communion performed at this table since the beginning of March. At the moment, I'm the only one allowed to do this. I'm the only one authorised to do this. But I do this this morning not for myself, but for us. In our communion service, we often say the words, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. So we stand in the present, in the presence of the risen Christ. We look to the past and to the victory he won on the cross, and we look forward to the hope of his return. But we also live in the present pandemic, looking back to where life used to be and looking forward to how we hope life might be. But we do so in the presence and in the power of the risen Christ. So the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your son, Jesus Christ, to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you with angels and saints praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends.
And taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> Likewise, after supper, when supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. For great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is, is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Though we are people in lockdown, we are not locked up in fear or doubt. And so we say together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. For though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in the one bread. No prayer of humble access today, but just the symbolic eating and drinking on behalf of us all. For as this bread was made by human hands, so the body of Christ is made by the unseen hands of the Spirit. As we take this physical nourishment, we open our hearts and lives to the spiritual nourishment that only God can give. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. And so before I say the prayer of thanksgiving, let's once again join in prayer to offer to God our thanksgivings for today, for the rain if you must, for one another, for the good things that are happening and have happened and will happen. Let's now spend a moment, a few moments, just saying thank you to God. Thank you, Lord, that though we don't know what the future holds, we know you hold the future. Help us trust in you. Thank you that Jesus said at the graveside of his friend, I am the resurrection and the life, and those who believe in you will have that life. And so I'll sum up all our Thanksgiving prayers in the one that is familiar to us. You may want to say it if you remember it. It's not actually on the, um, the order of service for this morning, but it is in our normal communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And as we come to the conclusion of our service, we turn back to our empty church. An inspiration for lament, but also an inspiration for celebration, praise and confident prayer. 
and we finish with a blessing. Father, help us to live this day to the full, being true to you in every way. Jesus, help us to give ourselves away to others, being kind to everyone we meet. Spirit, give us a love for the lost, proclaiming Christ in all we do and say. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us now and always. Amen. Before we rush away, maybe you just like to listen to these, uh, this music. It's called Have Mercy on Me. Uh, but slip away if you have to. Formerly our prayers have come to an end, but we just spend a few minutes coming down from what might have been an intense experience for some of us. And we just let God give us his peace and prepare us for the day. Amen. The light and grace, the power of the Lord, is the meekness of the Lord, who bore humanity with brave humility. Let your mercy flow through us.